If you want to get better at navigating the double bass and building walking bass lines, this video is for you. I'm going to dig into Ron Carter's comprehensive bass method, which shows you how the bass functions and the hand positions and locations of notes on the bass so you can play those beautiful notes just like Ron Carter does. This influential book is available in our sheet music store, link is in the description below, and I'm going to show you some of the discoveries I found digging into this remarkable book along the way, but also some of the principles that you can apply to get better on your very next gig. Let's dig in. Mr. Carter gets right into pizzicato and proper placement for the right hand pizzicato position. And you can see Ron's two fingers just like so. Now I love this. When playing pizzicato, the basses should think in terms of the right hand slurring the note. In this book, that is written for a jazz player who needs specific skill levels to play the bass as a jazz player. Not just how he strikes the notes here with his right hand, right hand or how he necessarily picks the notes, but how he learns how to control the length of the note. The more I've gotten to chat with people for my podcast in the jazz world, the more I realize that the bow is a major part of what they work on. And I have heard uh, Mr. Carter on interviews, I believe we even chatted about it on my podcast years ago, about the importance of learning the bow. I control whether the note is hard or soft or accent or not, just with these two combination here, is that the classical bass bears book is dead to the same skill level, but only with the bow. So just thinking about slurring those notes. Okay, that's a great concept. And just applying that throughout these exercises that we've got here or in whatever you're working on is going to help a lot with just having some continuity to your sound and really connecting lines. Interesting is that as necessary that skill level is to be competitive in that classical field, the jazz player needs an equivalent book that's based on harmony. The movement of the line, what chords they have to tell you, a rather general idea of what's a good tempo for this piece. Uh, how can I make the notes louder or softer and still maintain the essence? This book shows you how to do those things. So here's where these pitch guides figure in. And so you find your A here and you just use that pitch guide. You use what's in this position. I call this the trust but verify method. And so he's just showing you what are the available other octaves of these notes that are a stable pitch, so an open string. And then here, you get the low G and the open G. So those are your pitch guides for half position. So this is a book that's not specifically in, in contrast and competing with the classical bass player's method book. But this was written for the jazz player. And then very similar to Samandal, and this is so important for the jazz bassist, the working bassist, any bassist really, being able to understand that there are different notes that all share the same pitch but have different names. So he's getting into that right away, starting with F double sharp, G sharp, A. And then anytime there's one of those guide notes, he plays that just so that, or has you play that, just so that you can check in with that. Then different anharmonic spellings, just so you can get comfortable with that. Then we go over the D string. Again, whenever we have one of those open strings, we don't have any of those pitch guides in the A string, but that's okay. And something I like to do although this isn't laid out here, is I will sometimes check that C against the G to make sure that fifth is really resonant. And then for me, these are all great exercises to practice with the bow too, so you can go through these and just... One of the questions I'm often asked is, uh, can you give me some tips for my grandson, for my nephew, for my guy, my, my son, who learned how to play bass without a teacher? He needs some guidance. Tip is a comfortable word of giving someone advice and recommendations on how to get a start understanding what it takes to do what we do. Christian McBride and Jacob Pastorius who plays electric bass with the same kind of concept. Uh, Kenny Davis, Richard Davis, all those guys, man, they play with this kind of understanding of what it takes to have them get past Oh my goodness, what do I do next? Then Mr. Carter lays out a series of exercises and these are just wonderful navigation exercises for the bass. I am trying to think about ringing out as long as possible on these notes, so I do not want to play this first exercise. I don't anyway. But I am trying to see how 
much I can let these notes resonate. And I can practice them straight or I can practice them swung. And though there aren't any dynamics in here, I love to, from the get-go, think about phrasing these lines. And every time I play, I will do a little bit of a variation just to see if I can take the line to a certain point. I find that if I leave phrasing till the end, I never get to it. So even with my scales, even with exercises such as these, I find it really helpful to just think about where the line is going and if I can phrase that. always practicing music in addition to getting the technical building blocks that you're getting in these wonderful exercises. And, and uh, of what I tell everyone who asks me some tips for their fledging bass player friend, relative, cousin. It's a, it's, it's a, 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 one, two, three, a five word sentence with two words. Find the teacher, period. He moves through the positions in a similar fashion. So we're in first position now, and we're getting those guide notes, giving the different enharmonic spellings and going across the strings. And some lovely exercises in first position now. I love practicing exercises like this to this day. I love just thinking about connecting and phrasing and making lines out of this. And when there's a surprise harmonically bringing that out perhaps like in number two. Thinking about that B flat being something to really highlight, maybe go to it. That F sharp, little chromaticism. I think the days of kind of stumbling on your own and trying to become a genius with no lessons or no outside view of what you're trying to do to make the bass tell the story that you have in mind is some guy who's going to tell you, some teacher who's going to say, I'm not sure that's the best way to do that. Is there another way you can find that? Or, or whatever they use to cajole their students to look past their first excitement of, man, that sounds pretty good. Can I do that again? And then these great etudes where you're connecting the positions, connecting the dots as it is. So we're going to connect first position and half position. And he gives you just enough fingering info to show you where you need to go, but you still got to use your brain. And it's a, it's a wonderful way to get you going. You're just in one position, then you're in another position. Now you've got to do some thinking about how to navigate. So I can tell that I'm going to stay in first position based on the fingerings that he has. as often as you can. You gotta get calluses, you gotta get a feeling for how this bass sounds tonight. You gotta get a feel for the sound of the room. You got used to the feeling of how your bass sounds on this bandstand or with this various combination of instruments. These are all things that I'm learning every day that I've been playing over 60 years. Now the pitch guides are going to be the open strings. inventiveness of these etudes as you can and exercises as you continue to go through the method I really really get so much out of these I think they're just really there's so much in here to unpack Some of these etudes, so this is a half position through second position this almost reminds me of a Bach uh, bass line. At this point, he's removed the fingering, so you are using your musical intelligence and aptitude and what you've learned so far to make your own fingering decisions, which is so crucial. How to be a part of the band, understanding how the band works and how your piece fits into this band that makes the band even more complete. Uh, one of the things I learned early is that when I'm going to work at night, I'll leave my ego at home and bring a spare set of ears. Second and a half position, that is the second finger over what would be the fifth fret. So here we have our guide, P, 
pitch right here. And we're getting some spicy keys already. We got uh, five flats here. Wow, these are getting to be some sophisticated exercises here. Uh, this number four. Multiple voices throughout. Now half position through fourth position. Here we go. Oh, wow, it's like a broke bass line. I assure you, if you can adopt this attitude and make yourself comfortable with it, you, who are very important, you are not the focus of the band. Your job is to help them glad, be glad that they hired you. And then here are etudes that you can use to devise your own fingering and see how quickly you can uh, develop a fingering. Then we get his routine of scales, daily scale practice, and multiple fingerings. Just, just really great to have that material here. And then horizontal technique, which is scales across the instrument. And then arpeggios, which Mr. Carter says they're the most important part of the development of one's technique. And the point of this part of the book is to make you really understand what kind of feeling you get when you find the right notes in the right positions. That you go home at night and you aren't exhausted from doing this, you're appreciating what you've learned by knowing how to play the bass more horizontally. This is such great material, but you're not going to be able to implement it effectively unless you have a good practice routine. So check out this video that we've got here on developing a practice routine. Thanks, we'll see you in the next one.